Hey everyone, how's it going? It's your Sharif Mansour here. Um, so today I want to talk about the OWASP uh, board elections. Uh, and I'd like to cover a couple of things. So how do you vote? Uh, what are the timelines? Who's eligible? Um, and then some tips on the election, but also to give you an idea of what to expect. So first of all, what happens when you join the board? What are the expectations? Um, and also what are the benefits? Like why would you want to uh, 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 become a board member. So there's a couple of reasons, all pretty good. I can give you my honest feedback uh, for being on the board uh, for four years, and I can give you some of the tips as well on how to be a successful board member um, from sort of experiences of seeing other board members as well. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen uh, and go through uh, the deck and some of the uh, uh, suggestions I have. So one second, moving to another monitor. Okay. So the first thing is, how do you run for the board? So the first thing is you have to be an OS member in good standing for at least one year. Uh, you should get an email um, that looks like this. So it's call for interview questions and uh, submit your candidacy. So um, OS board members will then be given an email and it will basically say, hey, if you um, have questions for board members as part of the uh, uh, election process, submit your questions. And if you are a candidate, here's the form to submit your candidate. Um, this will be the email which you have used to become an OS member. If you want to know how to do that, that's pretty simple. So uh, under about, uh, there's a membership portal. Excuse me. Uh, so click on that. It's actually members.oasp.org. Pretty easy. Um, but you can check if you are not entirely sure uh, which email you sent. But you should get an email like this. Um, you, you would also at some point during the vetting process, just to make sure you're a member of good standing, to check that you've been there for a year and so forth. The next thing is you're gonna submit a video and answer some questions for the board. So as part of the email for the elections, um, you need to uh, make sure that uh, you, you provide the community uh, some information to, to help them make an informed decision. Uh, keep it short and sweet uh, as well, because um, they're going to have to look at multiple candidates. Um, and the timelines are as follows. So um, the call for candidates has, has already gone out. It's gone out on the 15th of last week. Um, candidates announced by email and social media at the 10th of September. So in about a month from, from that, they'll be notified. Aid membership uh, deadline. This is to make sure that um, for who wants to vote for the election, they need to make sure that they're a paying board member. That, sorry, they need to be a paying member. Um, so uh, members, or, or just to have a membership, right? So the important thing is by the 30th of September for you to be able to vote, you just need to make sure that your membership is in order. The 30th of September is the drop dead deadline. So also for candidates, if you want to make sure the people around you or their supporters are eligible to vote, they have until then to check. And again, the way to check is you check your membership portal, uh, make sure that's uh, updated. You can also have your membership to auto renew. So if you have that set up, you don't have to think about it. Um, on the 10th of October, this is when you get uh, an email. So the vote opens. Uh, it's done by email. Um, on the 30th, uh, the vote closes. It's obviously tallied. And then in the 1st of November, uh, the results are shared by email and social media. Uh, first of all, the candidates and the board are notified. And then everybody else is notified that shortly after um, uh, of, the, uh, of the results. Um, it's literally in, in the same day or 
with within uh, hours. And then um, I have some tips uh, as to what you should do when you're campaigning or to become a board member. So the first thing is only OS board mem OS members can uh, vote. So make sure that you don't just spam people on Twitter, for example, um, or although you should use uh, Twitter uh, as part of your campaign, but you have to be focused on OWASP members. So you have to know how to reach out to them, either in chapters and Slack and other places, um, uh, potentially in podcasts and so forth. Uh, you need to be able to talk to uh, uh, those members and be involved, right? So you have to be proactive, answer people's questions, make sure that you have a vision idea how to improve the foundation you need to talk to people uh, as well i need to be proactive and the last thing is you have to make an effort um uh you can see a correlation between the candidates that succeeded and the candidates that didn't and a lot of it is boiled down to submit your video submit what is required actually make an effort to uh, campaign and talk to answer people's questions. If it's outside of your comfort zone, don't worry. It's out of my comfort zone as well. Um, just be yourself, answer truthfully uh, the best way you can. You wanna write a blog article, you want to uh, talk to people or uh, go on chapter meetings or video calls to answer questions, whatever makes, whatever is uh, comfortable, but people will appreciate it and notice. Um, and people read and people check. So make sure that um, uh, at least you do uh, what you need to uh, as part of this. Now, um, so you run for the elections and you're successful. Congratulations. What's next? So uh, the first thing that will happen is obviously we'll congratulate you. And there's a little bit of orientation, meaning that you'll be uh, signing the uh, board of directors agreement because you will actually be an officer of the company and represent the OWASP Foundation. Um, you have some liabilities there, um, which is why you can sign the agreement. Uh, you will be given training. So we have a provider called BoardSource. So you'll be given uh, training of what it means to be a director um, of a nonprofit organization. Uh, the training is great, even though I've done Institute of Director training and I'm currently almost eligible to be a chartered company director. I also learned uh, a couple of things there. It's been really helpful. Uh, so the next thing is, what, what are, what's the cycle like? What, what is expected of me to be um, from being a, a board member? Well, there's a couple of things. The first thing that will happen is, you need to select the officers for the year. And what that means is there's board members at large, and then there's officers that hold a particular position, like the chair, the vice chair, the, um, uh, the this company secretary, and the um, treasurer. So I'll go through those one by one. So um, the chairman manages the board. Is not the boss of the executive director. He actually manages the boards, which is the boss of the foundation and sort of manages the foundation. So it's very clear there. Um, and he runs the board meeting, they run the board meeting. So the chairperson does that. The vice chair basically supports the, uh, the chair. If the chair is uh not present the vice chair steps in um and for most critical matters and they go it goes to the uh, chair the other important thing with the chair is also they're a tiebreaker so if there is a uh, uh a vote that is an impasse uh the chair is also the tie tie breaking vote um so at the beginning of the year um, so that's the chair. The vice chair basically is the chair when the chair is not present. Um, then you have the company secretary. 
um, he's responsible for sort of the notes and meeting minutes. That actually is done by the foundation staff, but it's important that the company secretary makes sure that they're sound, that the notes and the, uh, the votes um, have been recording uh, recorded correctly. Um, that generally is not a problem and uh, is actually done by the staff, but the, um, uh, the, the secretary is responsible for just making sure that it's, it's correct. Uh, last one is the uh, treasurer, which is an unsung hero. Uh, I say that because I've also become, uh, was the treasurer for one year, but um, the treasurer would go through with uh, the accounting team, make sure that the accounts are sound. Uh, they go through approvals on a monthly basis. That's an email, by the way. Uh, you can set up weekly calls if you want to. Some tre treasurers choose to do that. Um, but mainly it's a phone call uh, or an email uh, to approve any outstanding high uh, budget items, so over 10 grand. Um, so those are the officers. Uh, once those are elected uh, and agreed, by the way, the board elects them rather than the foundation. So the foundation elects the board of directors, the board of directors, uh, vote and agree on their officers. So once that is done, um, the previous board would have agreed on a strategy and an operating plan, would have an offsite in case you want to course correct or make some changes, obviously, because you're the new board. Um, the important thing is to approve and sign off on the budget, uh, the annual budget. Um, Usually that's done in the previous year, but you will have the ability to sort of influence the next year's budget. Uh, next up is uh, uh, the monthly meetings. So with the monthly meetings, we actually have two of them. So the four officers uh, tend to have, um, but by just tradition, um, a meeting the week prior to the uh, OAS board meeting, just prep just making sure that the board motions um, are correct, um, they're sound, um, everything is in order uh, for the monthly board meeting. And uh, you have 12 board meetings. Then there's a second offsite at the end of the year or tail, tail end of the year um, to basically take a look at snapshot of where we are. And off the back of that, uh, just to make sure that in the, in the half of the year there's uh, a need to course correct or check how we're doing on the strategy. And then obviously then there's the next board elections, uh, a new board comes in and the cycle continues. So next up is the board meetings. And I'll go through uh, one of them, which is quite involved, which was March this year. And I'll talk through some of the things that would make you a successful board member as well, just to help you. So the board meetings have a simple agenda. The first thing is the chair who runs it, they, we operate by um, Robert rules of order. So there's a small also cliff notes or cheat sheet for uh, Robert rules of uh, order uh, for the board. But Essentially, you will start the board meeting, we'll do um, uh, a roll call to just make sure that every board member is attendance. By the way, if your attendance dips over a certain amount, I think 75%, um, there's a full vote of confidence. We've just had the one for um, the board member who unfortunately uh, was absent due to um, a, a few extenu extenuating circumstances, which was fine. Um, we ran a vote of confidence. Um, but we understood why the, the, that board, and, uh, board member was present, uh, was not present. But important for you to make sure that this is one of the key requirements is your attendance. So once the attendance is out the way, one, two, um, uh, you approve the previous meeting minutes. Uh, so you look at the uh, meeting minutes from the previous uh, uh, meeting, so that was February's uh, meeting, um, and you approve uh, the vote. So every motion uh, needs a second, a sponsor and a second, 
And once that is second, it opens up for discussion and then a vote. Uh, this one is the, uh, the easiest one, which is you review the meeting notes, just make sure the vote counts make sense. If you voted on something correctly, just make sure that your vote was counted correctly and, and, and for the most part, that's fine. Um, then uh, Andrew Vanderstock as the ED goes through an update, um, basically the, the health of the foundation. Then we read out uh, e-votes and e-votes are a way for us to be able to still make decisions uh, for the foundation uh, even when um, uh, the board meeting is ended because we only meet for an hour or two uh, every uh, every month, it's not a lot to be able to dig into things in, in, in sufficient depth or finish all the agenda items. So we have e-votes. E-votes. We have we use Doodle uh, that's sent out to the board, and the board then comes in, uh, approves them uh, uh, via e-vote, and then we read them out in the the, the next board meeting to make sure that everything is audited, is, is minuted, uh, and documented. So we follow the old business. Once the old business is complete, we talk about new business. And those are the new board motions. So the first thing there is this concept called a consent package. And a consent package is some routine, standard, or non-controversial changes either in bylaws like spelling errors, grammatical mistakes that are being fixed that don't alter the intent um, of, the, of the bylaws or the policies or however it is, that gets pulled through as a consent package that gets sent ahead of time for the board to review, and then it's voted on. Every vote we mentioned has a sponsor and a second. So I'll talk about this um, for a minute because this is very key. Um, uh, it's very important for you to make sure that everyone is okay with the motion that you're presenting. So the depending on how big or small it is, then you need a little bit more time, a little bit more prep. So if it's a small thing, you might uh, present it to, uh, to the officer saying, I want this motion the week prior, you say, I want this motion uh, to be put in and uh, uh, proposed. And the, the, the officers will put that into the new business. And then you can speak through it as long as there's a second board, another board member that will second it. It then goes into discussion and then vote it. So if it's a small thing, um, then that's fine. Uh, if it's a big thing, it's a massive changing thing, like the policies down here, then um, we have uh, a, basically we have a policy review process, but we have like a com community engagement um, uh, process. Because if it's something that is gonna change the community, you need to make sure all the uh, stakeholders are involved. Um, the uh, community, the chapters, the leaders, the project leaders, um, uh, if it's a specific set of stakeholders, making sure that they're involved, including the staff, uh, you take that feedback. Ultimately, you need to convince uh, three other board members, aside from yourself, to agree on that motion. But they will not vote on it or agree on it unless you provide sufficient evidence um, that the community has actually looked into it and has provided their feedback, so that's one. Two, you've addressed any of the board members' concerns ahead of time, and they've had enough time to review it. Um, this is part of the reason why we make sure that every um, board motion has a sponsor, because that is the person that is trying to drive that meaningful change within the foundation. And the second is the person that's backing up or is allowing this to actually have a con conversation in the, uh, on the board. That's someone else sees it worth actually uh, discussing or uh, voting on it. And uh, essentially that's, that's uh, the majority of it. Um, you need four other votes, but I can't begin to tell you how many times motions have died 
because the sponsor who wants to make that change hasn't moved out with their stakeholders. The right people, the right, it doesn't just have to be the community, it has to be the staff uh, and others just to make sure that it's, it's considered the externalities of the impact to the community before that is being passed. But, but don't also don't be too worried about making a mistake because again, you can make an amendment in the next board meeting or an e-vote to make uh, necessary changes. Um, at the very end, there's the other business. So you can have a conversation, a discussion about certain items that are not board motions. So um, board members can talk about what they're passionate about. You can talk about proposals that you're thinking of doing or putting as a motion in a future board meeting. This gives the board a little bit more of a heads up. Um, and, and discussions that you can have offline between that now and the next board meeting. So for example, if you want to, it's March and you have a big motion, why not discuss it in the March board meeting, but only bring it for a motion and a vote in April or even the May board meeting, uh, just to make sure that you've gotten everybody's feedback and concerns. Uh, so, that is the main thing that is being asked of you. The, the cycles, um, as I've mentioned, uh, are here and we talked about the board meetings and how to also be successful as a board member. Let's talk about why. Why would you want to do this? Um, there are several reasons. The first one is um, you will learn a lot. You'll be able to flex your uh, strategic um, muscles uh, a lot of security people always talk about if only the board understood this or that, and you'll actually learn how a board thinks and what are the things that they care about, what are the things that they're worried about, and actually you can think about this for yourself, where and when security is even brought up uh, during these situations. Uh, the other thing to consider is that um, uh, that learning experience as well professionally is worth a lot. Uh, not just for um, your CV or so on, it's important because it, you will change. Uh, you will definitely think uh, differently. You will also value um, the discussions and being able to work with uh, six other people, none of which have leverage over the other person. They're all working together for a common good um, and everyone is an equal, no titles, nothing. Uh, we're all working together. And sometimes that's a struggle for people, but once when you learn and you, you work on it, it's incredibly rewarding. You'll be a better stakeholder at work um, and it's definitely served me well, uh, uh, for sure. Um, you'll be able to make a difference. Uh, this is a foundation uh, uh, with a mission to improve application security. You have the potential uh, to be able to make significant impact to the industry, which is part of the reason why. I mean, I can't begin to tell you like the, the immense pride to see Zap going to millions and millions of Docker downloads a month um, uh, I, at my time on the board, I managed to convince a, um, uh, uh, a researcher to uh, contribute his open source project to the OWASP Foundation. That was OWASP MS. And now it's a flagship project. It's in Kali Linux, bug bounty hunters around the world use that tool. Um, and it has made a difference in the industry. Um, there are several key examples of that, but just seeing that grow is incredibly rewarding and um, can improve the state of uh, application security uh, around the world. So just by being able to do this, this is incredibly rewarding and a great experience uh, to be a part of. And you'll just meet incredible people. I met senior people in the Linux Foundation, at Google, at Microsoft, at GitHub. I have worked with uh, exceptionally talented engineers uh, uh, and it's 
it's a fascinating world. Uh, so that's definitely one of the main rewarding items. And pre-COVID for the offsites and uh, other uh, capabilities, you're able to travel and to meet the OWASP communities and uh, be a part of this great uh, uh, family. And that's a key word there, which is, we were there for each other. We've been spent four years as colleagues and 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 friends, and uh, it's a treasure. Um, some of these people I can find in um, uh, when I'm down or I have sort of genuine sort of challenges in life and so forth. And they're there. They're there for you. They'll have your back. And uh, it's been a, uh, an incredible and uh, rewarding experience. I was honored to be the chair of the foundation during its 20th anniversary. Um, and it's a, it was a great ride. So I, uh, I wholeheartedly encourage you to join, but also more importantly is um, being the change you want to see in the world. I know as corny as it sounds, it is true. Um, and the foundation needs uh, good candidates uh, for sure. Uh, so please uh, do consider this and do consider that um, if you feel you have what it takes, um, there are some time commitments, but what you get out of it is incredibly immense and is incredibly immense for the community. So, and I wish all the candidates the uh, best of luck. Have a great day. Bye-bye.